we focus on the breath, you've got all four frames of reference right here. The breath is a manifestation of the body. And there are feelings. Feelings can either be physical or mental. They come basically down to pleasure, pain, and neither pleasure nor pain. Then you've got mind states. That's just a mind that's impassioned or a mind that's not impassioned, a mind that's aversive or not. And then it works its way up to more subtle things like a mind that's concentrated or not, or a mind that's reached a state beyond which it has never been before or not. Those deal with more refined states of concentration. And then finally, mental qualities. Things that get in the way of your concentration, like the hindrances, or things that help your concentration, like the factors for awakening. And often it's hard to make clear distinctions, especially on the mental side, say with mental feelings. The feeling part of the mental feeling is the feeling tone of either being pleasant or unpleasant or neutral. But rarely do we have feelings that are just simply positive or negative or neutral. There are stories that go along with them that color the particular feeling. That comes from perception and, and fabrication in the mind. And that gets you into mind states or mental qualities more. And again, the line between mind states and mental qualities is very hard to pin down. You might think of the mind state as being when the whole mental committee has agreed on something, whereas the mental qualities are the specific members of the committee. clearest line is between bodily phenomena and mental phenomena. And that's an important one to focus on. You've got the breath coming in and going out, and then you've got the mind here, liking and disliking, making up all kinds of stories about it, and then reacting to those stories one way or another, either seeing that a story is something really fascinating and you want to follow through with it, or realizing that it's not a very skillful story and learning how to separate yourself out from it. That's part of what these different ways of analyzing mental phenomena are helpful with. Because when you can see a mental phenomenon simply as a mental phenomenon, and that is a world that you have to enter into or one that you have to believe, that gives you a certain measure of safety right there, a certain amount of protection. The ability to pull yourself out. And this is where the body is helpful. You stay with the sensation of the body, and that helps to prevent you from getting totally wrapped up in a particular mind state. Think of the fact that you've got breath here. You've got the different elements of earth water, fire, that you feel as solidity, liquidity, warmth. When you can keep that as your frame of reference, it helps you from getting sucked into the other frames of reference. Or it helps you to see them as frames of reference rather than getting sucked into them as worlds. When the Buddha talked about a practice that helps develop all four frames of reference, he pointed to breath meditation. And in every case, you're always conscious of the breath, no matter whether you're dealing with body or feelings, mind states or mental qualities. You never lose your reference to the breath, even when you're trying to develop things like dispassion. You try to breathe in a way. You notice how you're breathing as you're developing dispassion. You notice how you're breathing as you're contemplating inconstancy. You try to stay anchored here with the body. 
This is why so much is focused right here, because if you don't have this anchor, it's like being pulled into the clouds. Carried off by the winds. You don't know where you're going to come down. But you have something to anchor yourself to the ground. You don't get pulled away. You get, there may be some pull, but you don't lose your bearings, and you know where you are. So it's important that you realize how essential it is to the practice to have a really solid foundation here with the body and not be in too great a hurry to move on to some other frame of reference. Even when you're aware of feelings or mind states, you want to have the body as your post. Remember the image the Buddha gave of the six different kinds of animals tied together by a leash. And if they're not tied to a post, then whichever animal happens to be strongest is going to drag all the rest off in the direction it wants to go. But if they're tied to a post, then they can only go so far. And it doesn't matter which one is stronger than the others. They're all right here. And then as you are right here, then you can notice what else is going on in terms of inside the mind. It's not that when you're aware of the breath, you're aware only of the breath and not of the mind. In fact, what usually happens is as the breath gets more and more calm, more and more subtle, to the point where it actually stops. Not because you're holding the breath, but simply that the activity of the mind is so calm that you're not in need of a lot of oxygen. You're not using up a lot of oxygen, you're not creating a lot of carbon dioxide in the blood bloodstream. So there's not that much need for your in and out breathing. And simply having a perception of the breath channels in the body all being open and all connected is enough to keep you going. When the breath is at still, then the events of the mind become more and more prominent. And you can watch them from that stillness. The stillness can be your foundation. You can work with the other elements at that point. And John Fu used to have his students, once they reached the state of the meditation where the, bra <clears throat> where the breath got really calm, and still, was to focus first on the warmth in the body. Where is it warm right now? What's the warmest spot in the body? Focus there. And then think of the warmth spreading out from that spot. Then you can do the same thing with the water property, which he identified with the feelings of coolness. Where do you feel coolest right now? Can you balance the two? It's like playing with the dials on a new stereo that you get. You turn up the volume, turn it down, play with the balance until you get something that feels just right. Then you do the same balancing the breath energy with the sense of earth. Sometimes if you get really into the earth element, everything gets really heavy and can get really unpleasant. So you want to balance it out a bit. What you're learning about here is the power of perception, the labels you place on things. And how perception can have a huge impact on your feeling tone. So right there you're playing with feeling and mind states. And of course there's analysis of qualities, which is one of the factors for awakening. So you've got Dhammas or mental qualities there too. It's hard to meditate without getting everything engaged like this. But when the breath is really still, this is one of the reasons why we work with it so assiduously. When the breath is really still, then we can see things very clearly, what ex exactly is going on in the mind. I can sort out all the different ways that we glom things together and turn them into huge, big, sticky forms of suffering.
This is why when one of John Fuang's students complained that her practice wasn't making all the fast progress that she wanted, he said, look, work on your foundation. You really want to get the foundation good. Don't worry about the insight. Don't worry about all the, the other things that you think lie down the path. This is when the foundation is really good. That's when the other things are possible. If the foundation isn't good, then everything else is unstable. It's shaky. You can think about these things, you can play with them a little bit, but then it all starts to fall apart. But if your foundation is good, as you stay here with the breath, then you have a foundation for understanding. When the Buddha talks about feeling or perception, fabrications, consciousness. What is he talking about? You can see these things in action or feelings and mind states and mental qualities, you can see them in action because you worked through all the interference that the breath was creating. And in staying with the breath and making it really still, you've learned how to pare things down. You have hands-on experience with these different frames of reference or the different aggregates. So the concentration is not something just to step on and then immediately jump off and go someplace else. You want to stay here. This is your foundation. Everything else is going to have to be built on this foundation. So don't let yourself do a slip, slipshod job here. Be careful. Be meticulous. Because it's not just a step on which you place your foot for a bit, and then you jump off of This is where you're going to stay. This is your home. It's your Vihara Dhamma. So make sure that you build it well.